So far, we've kept things pretty basic. Now we're gonna take it a step further. We're going to circle back to that first process that we created, and we're going to enhance it with more advanced automations. In this lesson, we'll be focused on dates. Specifically, we'll be giving your tasks start dates and due dates so that everything stays on track and on time. Now, traditional project management tools would have you manually set the due date on each and every task. You know the routine. You'd have to find a task, figure out what the lead time should be, and then manually you know, pick a date from a calendar and then save it. And then you'd have to go do that for hundreds of other tasks. And then, oh no, things changed. Things got pushed back by a week. Now you've got to go back into all of those individual to-dos and change their dates and resave them. What a pain. Luckily, there's a better way. It's called dynamic dates. You can use them to let your process handle all of that legwork for you. I'm talking about those tedious date calculations or recalculations when things change. That can be automated. In this lesson, we'll cover setting start and due dates on process steps versus tasks. What's the difference there? How a dynamic date rule works and how to set one up. And then how to chain your process steps using dynamic dates and some common patterns and best practices when it comes to setting up dynamic date rules. I'll show you how dates on real-time tasks actually get automatically calculated and what to do if you need to change dates on the fly. All right, setting dates on process steps versus tasks. What's the difference? Now, as you've learned, you can create processes and you can create task lists, which are copies of your processes. So naturally, a step in a process looks very similar to a task in a task list. But one thing is different between a process step and a task, and that's the way that it handles its start date and due date. A task is a real-time to-do. And so you might say this task should start on June 1st at 10 o'clock a.m. and it should be due on June 5th at 5 o'clock p.m. Steps in a process, on the other hand, are not real to-dos. They're just templates. And so you wouldn't give a process step a real start or due date. Instead, steps in a process can have date rules. So what is a dynamic date rule and how should we set one up? Well, a dynamic date rule basically says this step should start X number of days before or after something else occurred. Or it could say this step should be due X number of days before or after something else occurred. Let's open up our new client onboarding process and set up dynamic date rules on one of its steps. So I'm gonna to go to my processes. You can get to that here in the navigation. And then I'm gonna go into our new client onboarding process that we created earlier. Then I'll open up the first step and I'll click this calendar icon to open up the date rules panel. And then I'll click add start or due date rules. First, we'll add a start date rule. Now we want this first task to start immediately when the project starts. So this is how we'll set up this rule. We want it to start zero days and zero hours after the project starts. And then we'll click update. Now that we've saved this rule, it reads out as follows, start after the project is set to start. All right, now let's continue editing the date rules. So we'll click this box. And now we're going to add a due date rule. Let's make this step due three days after the step starts. So let's do three days and leaving this blank is the same as, as writing zero, so that's fine. After this task starts, we'll click update to save that. So this step will start when the project starts and it'll be due three days after this task starts. Now I could have made the due date set to three days after the project starts, just like I did for the start date. And that would achieve the same outcome, but I prefer to make a due date rule based on the start date rule because that creates more of a chain reaction. This way, if anything were to change on how we want this task to be started, we wouldn't really need to change the due date because it's just based on when it starts. Now, a common pitfall when setting up processes for your business is that the timelines that you've built into your process don't really match what happens in the real world. You know, sometimes tasks take longer than expected to finish and sometimes tasks go faster. And then all that effort that you put into trying to make your business more predictable 
that all flies out the window if things don't stick to their ideal timelines. So the way to avoid this common pitfall is to create what I call a chain effect in your process so that one task determines the start and due dates of the next task. Now, so far we've set date rules on the first step in our process. Now let's make sure that the second step does not get its start or due date set until the first step has been completed. If you remember, the first step was confirming that payment was received and the contract was signed. So we would not want to proceed with the second step kicking off the project until that first step was done. Let's go to the second step. We'll open it up and go to the date rules panel. We'll add start or due date rules, and let's add a start date rule. Now this second step should be due zero days after another task was completed. And we'll select that first task as the one that we're looking at to be completed. And we'll click update to save that. So we've set a start date rule that says start after the confirm payment and sign contract task is completed. Okay, let's continue editing the date rules and we'll add a due date rule to this one. This time we'll leave the days empty or zero and we'll set it to be due eight hours after this task starts. Click update. All right, let's cover a few common patterns and best practices when it comes to setting up dynamic date rules in your processes. As a general best practice, the start date should usually be based on the previous step's completion date or due date. The due date should usually be based on this current step's start date. That's what helps to maintain this chain effect. Now, another common pattern, as you've already seen in our example, is to have the first step in your process start when the current project starts or you can have the first step start when the current task list has been created on the project. And that would be useful when you expect that this process wouldn't be added to a project until later in the project's lifetime. Now, as you near the steps later in your process, a common pattern is to base those steps dates on the project's end date. And that can be useful when you're using the project end date as the final delivery date, or maybe a publication date. That way you can make sure that those steps provide the proper lead time before or after that final delivery date or publish date. All right, now I'm going to go through most of the rest of these steps and add dynamic dates to them. Now you can follow along with this or you can add your own or you can even come back and, and add these dynamic date rules later on if you need to. I'm gonna speed up the video and knock out the rest of these date rules. Okay, so I've built out most of the date rules on this process. And if you've only done the first two steps, that's totally fine. We can move on for now. And now let's see these dynamic date rules work their magic in a project with real-time tasks. So I'm gonna go over to my boards and I'll go to the new client onboarding board. And let's create a new onboarding project for onboarding our newest client, onboarding of Oceanic Airlines. We'll create that. Okay, so once again, our task list has been automatically created as a copy of our process. And now you can see that this first task has a start date and a due date. And if we click that, you can take a closer look at them. And these are actual dates and times based on when we just created this project, which was, this is the date that I'm recording this right now. But you'll also notice that the rest of these tasks don't have any dates set on them. Why is that? Because I did set date rules on them. Well, let's take a look at that second task and look at the date rules. These are blank, but you see this bolt icon on both of these. That indicates that we have dynamic date rules set on these. And if you remember, the start date rule on this second task was based on when the first task is completed, and we haven't yet completed this task, so that's why these are blank. So let's go ahead and complete this task now. And a moment later, you should see the start date and due dates 
for the second task, fill in, based on the time that I actually completed this task. So the start date was based on the time that I completed that, and the due date was set to eight hours after the start date of this task. Pretty cool, huh? Now, assuming that you've built out that chain effect with your dynamic date rules, you might see some of the other tasks also fill in their dates as you make progress through this task list. Okay, so what happens when you just need to change the dates on the fly because things change, as they so often do? Well, let's play out two common scenarios. So here's the first scenario. Your client verbally agreed that they're going to sign up for your service, and that started the project. But they informed you that they're waiting on some funding, so they're not going to proceed with payment and contract for an additional two weeks. Now, since the first task in this onboarding project is set to start when the project starts, you can simply change the project's start date, pushing it back by two weeks, and that would cause the first task's start date to automatically adjust to two weeks later, and then its due date would also automatically be recalculated, and that's how that chain effect works. All right, well, first I'm just gonna reset our task list here. Now, to change this project's start date, we would just go over to the Details tab on this project and set the start date to something else, let's say two weeks in the future and click update. And now let's go back to our tasks. And you can see that the dates on this first task have been automatically recalculated now that we've changed the start date of the project. All right, so here's the second scenario. Your client has signed up, they've paid, the contract is signed, and so then you've checked off the first task. Or maybe the task was checked off automatically when the payment has landed. That's actually possible, and I'll show you how in a future lesson. But either way, we're off to a good start. But your client also informed you that they'll be out of town next week, so they won't actually be ready to kick things off until a week later. Now normally, your second task would start immediately because we've just completed the first task. But in this case, you want to delay it by about a week, you know, until after your client returns from their traveling, because you wouldn't want to bug their client while they're away. So how do we handle this? Okay, well first we'll open up that second task and we'll go to its dates. And let's just manually change the start date and push it back by, oh, well, let's make it start early the following week. And we'll update that. Aha, uh -huh. so when we're manually changing the dates, we always have to make sure that we're still abiding by the, like the physics of time, right? Uh, you know, the start date cannot be after the due date. So let's just make sure that the due date also gets manually changed. Now that we've manually changed the start and due dates on the second task, the rest of the project did not get thrown off track. As you can see, the third task here automatically recalculated because this due date is based on the due date of this task. And if this due date changes, then it would affect that. So our project will flow along normally as we go along, you know, just with this manual delay set in the second task. And should you ever need to you know, manually tweak some settings on the date rules themselves once you're here in the task in a project, you can always do that as well. Just click the dates and then click Manage Date Rules. And then from here, you can see what the original date rules were, you can change their settings, or you can even delete them altogether. And that won't impact your process template. It won't impact any other projects that are using your process. Since we're here in this project, which is just a task list made as a copy off of your process, we're only editing the settings on this instance. All right, if you thought that dynamic date automations are powerful, you ain't seen nothing yet. Next up, we're going to add automated actions that can fire off every time a task is completed. We're gonna cover task actions in the next lesson.